All right, ladies, um, if you, you guys will hang in there with us a little bit longer, I'm going to talk to you guys for a few minutes, and then we have one more speaker after me. So I was talking to my dad the other night, and he's on Facebook, so he saw the schedule for this weekend, and he was like, so, you're going to teach everybody how to read their Bible? <laughs> I was like, what? And I look back, I'm like, why did I name it that? Like that. So this whole week, I'm like, I don't want y'all to think like Rebecca's so awesome at reading her Bible. She's going to stand up and she's going to tell everybody how to do it. No. I think I was just tired, maybe. I don't really know what was happening. But um, the word, you know, God has really transformed my time in the word with him over the last year. So it's just been something that's been on my heart. And if you don't know me, my name is Rebecca, and I have the privilege of leading the women's ministry here with some other amazing ladies. And last year, we just kept hearing ladies say, I want to read my Bible, but I don't know how. And so we were like, okay, we need to talk about this at the conference. Um, so... If you find yourself in that place, um, you are not alone. Listen, every, everybody in here has been at the place where they're like, I don't even know, like, what does this even mean? I don't even understand what it is that I'm reading. Like, we've all been to that place, so you're not alone in that. Um, the Bible is such an incredible gift to us. And 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that all scripture is God-breathed, that every single word in the book is inspired by God. This verse also tells us what the scriptures do for us. They teach us what is true, they help us realize what's wrong with our lives, and they train us up in righteousness. So from cover to cover, the Bible is about Jesus, and all the stories in the Bible point to Jesus and God's redemption. And we can recognize that whenever we uh, look at the meta narrative of Scripture rather than reading it in this postmodern mindset. The Bible is the absolute truth and is as true and relevant today as it is when it was written. And it is this book that shapes us spiritually and is crucial to our spiritual growth. Well, so one thing, one reason why I think that we struggle so much when we open up the book is that I, I think that we try to read it in our own strength. And we make it about us. The Bible is about Jesus. And his ways are so much higher than our ways that, that we can't understand it in our own strength. So when we accept Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit, and it is the Holy Spirit that helps bring understanding to what it is that we're reading. I also think that it helps to understand just the genre of Scripture. And I, I wanted to have like a slide for y'all, but I'm just, I was a little tired this week. <laughs> So I didn't get it up there, but I will post it on our Women Connect page because I've just there's some really cool things out there that show the different genres of scripture, and I want you guys to be able to see that. Um, so you don't have to understand that to be able to open up the Bible and read, but I do think it helps. So for an example, if when you open up to the New Testament and you start reading the first four chapters, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it helps to know that those four chapters are accounts of Jesus' life. So it just helps to kind of know what it is that you're reading. Another reason that I think that we struggle in the word is because we have created in our minds what we think it should look like. Okay, so when we spend time in the Word, it can really look different every single day. Some days we might read an entire chapter, and God is really just speaking to us and teaching through that entire thing. And, and some days you may read a, a single verse, and, and that's enough for, for God to just speak something to your heart that day. And some days it might be one word that you read in there, and, and God just, you just meditate on that word, and God speaks to you through that. Um, you know, I have days where I open up the word, and I read it, and there is no huge revelation for me, 
But even on those days, it's important for us to stay plugged into the word just because of who it's about. And the most important thing is that we create in our lives, we create our lives around Jesus, and we diligently spend time with him day in and day out. So that's done through communicating with him through prayer, reading his word, and being still and quiet in his presence. The last thing that uh, I want to talk about that I think is hard is timing. You know, I have always struggled with getting up early in the morning and spending time with the Lord. Yet it's always been my desire to do that because growing up, that's what my mom did. Every single morning I got up and my mom, I could hear my mom having her quiet time. And it just was, there was something so rare and special about it that I wanted that too. And as I've grown up, I've had other spiritual leaders in my life, and that is what they have done too. But my, my problem has been the little human beings in my life. They, they make me tired, and I don't want to get up early. Uh, but, um, you know, the, I think we go through seasons of life, and um, I just, we've, I've had to give myself grace in those seasons that I've had small children. And, you know, I've used this method in my in with spending time with the Lord of like, my life is so crazy and busy. I'm just going to fit the Lord in wherever I can, right? But I have found that when I do not give him the scraps of my day, but rather the firsts of my day, something is different. And that thing that's different is me. So That's been huge for me. The more that I realize realize how poor in spirit I am and the great need that I have for Jesus throughout my day, the more that it motivates me to get up and spend those first moments of my day with Jesus. Um, I have a couple of different water bottles that I fill up in the morning before I leave my house, and they're, like, so huge. One is a, like a gallon, and the other one's like 73 ounces, and so I have, we have this little like water dispenser in my house, and so it takes a few minutes to sit there and just be like, like fill this huge water bottle. It requires a little bit of patience, as I cannot make the water come out of the dispenser any faster than it's uh, designed to do, and I have found that if I wait until the last minute, that sometimes, like, if I wait to the last minute before I walk out the door, that sometimes I either just don't fill it up or I just grab it and I take it with me empty. I'll tell myself, I'll just fill it up later. And, you know, I think the same is, I think it's the same way with us and the Lord. When we get in his presence, it, it can't be something that is rushed. Um, as, the you know, the Holy Spirit moves as he pleases And, uh, you know, this is where we have to remember that this, it's not about us. It's about him. And, and he moves and speaks as he chooses. Otherwise, you know, if we don't carve out that time to sit with the Lord in the mornings, then what happens? We rush out the door empty rather than allowing, sitting at his feet and allowing him to fill us up. And I, I desperately want to be filled with his presence before my day starts. I, I need him for even the smallest tasks, um, the ones that seem so trivial and, and easy for me to control. Um, I need him for those things. And the last thing that I need to be before my day, and you know, when I'm going forward in my day is empty and without the Holy Spirit filling me. Um, you know, I want people to look at me throughout my day and, and say, she's been with Jesus. Um, you know, that's the same way that the council did with Peter and John in Acts 4.13. It says, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were just ordinary men with no special training in scripture. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. 
You know, I know and recognize that there is no good in me apart from Christ. And if I want any good coming from me, I have to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and that only comes through spending time with him. So what I want to do is actually open up God's word with you and take you through a passage of scripture to show you a few practical tips um, whenever you're reading. You know, I am, like I said, I am not uh, perfect at this at all. And I have mornings where I open the word and I read and I'm just, God's word just leaps off the page in this like transformative way. And then I have days where I just snooze my alarm. <laughs> for, you know, over and over, you know, and, but I do work really hard at being consistent, but I give myself grace where needed, and, and I remind myself that this is not uh, a rule to be followed, but it is about a relationship with Jesus. So, the first thing um, you know, that we have, that you have to do before you open up the word is pray. And um, so let, let me do that right now. Father God, I just pray as we open up your word, Lord, that you would just reveal yourself to us through your word, Lord, and that for those ladies that are sitting here that struggle with reading their Bible, God, or don't know feel like they don't know what they're doing when they open up their Bible, God. I just pray that you would give us revelation in this moment, God, and that you would just anoint this time with your spirit, Lord, and just um, teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, go ahead and get out your Bible. And if you don't have one, don't worry, we're going to give you one <laughs> before you leave. Um, if you've never uh, read your Bible before at all, then I would suggest starting uh, maybe in one of the gospels and just reading about Jesus's life, like maybe in John, go into John and just starting in the beginning and, and reading. Um, but we're going to use a scripture in Psalms. And every single Bible has a table of contents in the front, so don't be afraid to use it. If you don't know where Psalms is at, it's right in the middle of your Bible. And if you still can't find it, ask somebody around you. They, they can probably help you. Psalms 25, 4 through 5 is what we're going to read. Psalm 25, 4 through 5. Uh, okay, I'm going to read, starting in 4. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me. For you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. So the first thing that you want to ask yourself when you open up the word is not, how does this apply to me? And I think that's something, that's something I did for a long time. That was my first thing when I read, well, how does this apply to me? How does this apply to my situation? But God has really shifted that in my life to ask, to, when I read the word, ask first, what does this say about God? Because remember, it's not about us, it's about him. So that has to be our first question. So I actually want you to take a few minutes, and I want you to look at those two verses, and I want you, if you have a piece of paper maybe, or your notes on your phone or something, I want you to list what, what does it say about God? What are the facts in, in these two verses? Okay, somebody give me something. Give me a, a fact about God in the scripture. He's a teacher. 
He's our hope. Mm. Yeah. He leads me. He's my savior. He knows the way. Mm, good. Okay, what else? He's the truth. He's the one I long for. Mm. My life is in his hands. The one I wait for. He has the answer. You see what's happening here? See what happens when you start looking at the word and and just going, what does this say about him? You know, I think that we open up the word and we... We want to know, we, we want to open it up in, in asking, well, how does this apply to me? That's not a bad thing because we want to know how can we apply this to our lives? What does this say about me or how can I find myself? But it's, but it's when we find him is when we find ourselves, okay? And so, so this works. Okay, the next question that you would ask is that, well, what does this mean to me? All those things that we just said, what do those mean to me? Okay, somebody want to, he wants us to rely on him, be obedient, he is my everything, he's my friend, we're to follow and listen, Mm. okay, that last, and then the last question that I want to take, that I want you to answer is, What will I choose to do with this? Okay, somebody want to answer that? Ask him for his guidance. Honor him, not seek hope in other things. Say that again. One more step. Somebody said something over here. What would you say? Know that he's faithful. Yeah, that's good. Yes, truth you can rely on. So... That's where we can go. I think, I think sometimes where we get messed up is the order of things. You know, we make it about us first instead of making it about him first. And, and so when we read the word and, and we just ask ourselves, what does this say about God? And, and then we know what it says about him. We, could, we begin to learn. Look at how many answers came out of that. Like, that's learning God's character and who he is. And that transforms our lives a, alone by just learning about who, the, who he is. And, and then we can say, okay, how can I apply this to my life? Or what does this mean to me? And then you really challenge yourself with a, what am I going to do with this now? Am I just going to close my Bible and just go on? Or am I going to let it transform me and my thinking and my words and my actions? And I'm going to go forth in my day and, and um, apply it and be different. You know, these are just a few uh, simple but powerful questions that you can ask yourself. And what they do is they help you stick to the facts and not adding or taking away from the scripture. And then, like I said, they challenge you to just go out and and live it out and just know him more. So sometimes uh, when something jumps out at me, I'll, I might just sit and, and just pray about it, um, or I might journal about it. I don't know, just sometimes I just have to, when I read something and the Lord is just speaking to me, maybe just sit on it a little bit, you know, instead of rushing through. Remember, 
We have to, it's not something that can be rushed. We cannot rush the Lord. We have to give him time to do what he pleases in our lives. Um, so, so I really try hard in that time to just le- allow the Holy Spirit to just show me. Sometimes I keep reading. Sometimes I stop, like I said, and sometimes I journal. And, and then some mornings my child wakes up and I have to tend to her. And it ends. Like, it just, like I said, it's just grace, giving myself grace in that time. Um, so cover to cover. The book is about Jesus, and if we want to be like him, then we have to know what that book says, and we cannot understand it in our own strength. We need the Holy Spirit, and that number one question asking ourselves is, what does this say about God? And last, we have to remember that reading your Bible and spending time with the Lord is not something that we check off of a list every single day. It has to become who we are, and it's so instilled in us that it, it's not, we, it's, we don't put it on a checklist. It's just something that we do naturally, and it is about, it's not about a rule to be followed, but it is about a relationship with the Lord. So I'm going to pray for you guys real quick, and then... Um, I don't, I don't know what we're doing after that. Um, Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these ladies, God. Um, the amount of ladies that we have here is proof that you are drawing hearts close to you, Lord. And I think that this room is full of women who are hungry for you. And so I, I just pray that nobody um, walks out of this room without a word from you, God. And I just pray that we don't walk out those doors and, and go on and get busy with our lives, but, but we uh, just give ourselves time to allow all of these things to sink in. And then I pray that we would be so diligent in spending time with you day in and day out, God, so that we can get to know you more and more and more, and that, God, you would transform our lives to look more and more like you so that when we step out of our house houses and we go to work and we go to school and we do all of these things, that people look at us and just know and recognize, God, that, that she has been with Jesus and that they would look at at us and and want what it is that we have, God. I pray that we would just be women that rise up and take this truth out, God. Lord, I just pray that that we would... um, give ourselves grace in the different seasons of life that we're in, Lord, and that we would not make this uh, a set of rules or a checklist to be followed, but God, we would um, let it just be come so much a part of who we are, God, that it it becomes so natural to us, Lord. God, we thank you and we praise you, and God, we love you so much. Amen. I I do want to say something really fast. Um, we, because this is so much on our hearts right now, guys, and we want you guys to go out of here and we want you to study the word. Um, we actually, um, can you pull that uh, sheet off of that table? We just got like a ton of resources, um, Bible studies, scripture, memory cards, and then I think we have 20 Bibles. Is that right? Raise your hand if you do, okay, if you do not own a Bible at all, like you don't have a Bible in your house at all. Don't be afraid, because I'm gonna, we're going to give you a Bible, and it's a sweet Bible. So everybody in here has a Bible? I can't see. Okay, okay, oh, one, two, okay. Will y'all, will y'all pass those Bibles out? Okay, keep your hand up, because we're going to give you a Bible, and... And please don't be afraid. If you don't have one, we want to we want to give you one. We have like twenty of them, I think. And and if you don't, if we run out of them, if we run out of them, then what I want you to do, um, let's see. I didn't plan this part out. Let us know because we're gonna buy you one. Okay. We want to buy you one, and we want to give you one. And then at the end of the day today, 
uh, we're going to have some, a couple ladies over here at this table, and we want you to come and take all of these resources, okay? There's Bible, we have like a ton of Bible study. I think we have like 250 pieces that we just want to give y'all. And some are scripture memory cards that are just super cool, and you can put them wherever and just kind of meditate on that scripture. Uh, and then there's a bunch of Bible studies. So anyways, we just want to give that to you guys to just help you. Oh, yeah. No, it's not leftovers. We bought it for y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we specifically bought it for now so that we could give it away to you guys. So um, also, if you don't have a Bible and you didn't want to raise your hand, just come find one of us, like, nah, one of these ladies up here, and let us know because I know we have several more over there. <laughs> 